my family go back to the 1600s here. My family date back over a thousand years in Selsey. My family's been in Selsey since 1726. Ever since then, there's been one or two or three of the members of the family in the fishing community. There's no swagger involved. You've just got this passion to go to sea and catch fish. Fishing for me is a drug. It's the thrill of it, the thrill of the hunt. The chase, um, the excitement of it, uh, the thrill of catching. It, uh, it was a, though it's a, a job, a way of earning a living, it was the excitement that really that drew me to it. I was um, very little when I first went to sea with Dad, um, knee high to a grasshopper, and just fell in love with it. It was just, it was fun, a lot of fun. Hard work, but fun. From a youngster, three years old, messing about down the beach and couldn't wait to get in the boat, you know, and go to sea with my father. When I first went to sea with my father at five or six, I was as sick as a dog, but there was just something about it. So we just kept going. Like my father used to say, if you're going to be sick, be sick, but stay out of the way. Oh, there's lots of superstitions with Selsey fishermen. Um, you could never wear green on his boat because that was considered to be landlubbers. Um, you could never whistle. You could sing, but you could never whistle. And if someone chucked a rabbit on the deck of your boat, you wouldn't go to sea for a week. He had a saying that when the wind is in the west, the fish are at their best. When the wind is in the east, the fish are at their least. I was fortunate enough to start fishing at a time when we were still fishing using willow pots, uh, anything made out of willow. It was all manual, everything manual. Fishing was a lot different then what it is now. We had to cut the willows in the winter and make the pots. The good thing about it was that the fishing got a good rest during the winter. It was far more seasonal, the fishing. Um, we used to start sort of around the March time, put the pots in and fish and through the summer into the autumn. Generally by Christmas we'd have the pots home and stored. As time moved on the markets improved in the continent. Once that opened up then everybody started fishing full time. We had a fleet of West Country boats come up and of course they fished in an entirely different way to we did. We were still quite primitive and they turned up with these huge great crabbing boats and they, they stringed them like, we'd, like we're doing now, long warps, a bit like a washing line, 20, 30, 40, up to 100 pots on the string. And to them it was virgin ground because they never seen lobsters like it. And because of the way we fished, and it was left in the winter, actually nurtured the ground. But they come along and literally, it was phenomenal fishing for them. <laughs> we have actually got round to the idea that perhaps we should get um, strings of pots the same as those which we did. The youngsters, as in me, and my generation, they all went out and started buying their own boats. In fact, we sort of found our own niche in that because we found ways of doing things better than what the West Country boats had done. I started crewing um, for other fishermen uh, for the first two or three years and then eventually I got my own boat. My wife um, sort of worked side by side, she did all the support ashore, ordering goods, um, working out our books, VAT returns, paying the wages, that sort of thing. And my son, he sort of started coming fishing really, you know, from sort of the age of six, he used to come regular. In his teens, he was uh, almost full time. And... After leaving school at uh, 16, crewed with a few different fishermen for a number of years. And then, uh, I can't remember what age, I think about 23, 22, sort of progressed to our own boat really, me and my brother together. Um, and that's where we've been ever since. These days we tend to specialise in um, crab and lobster mainly, but with whelks through the winter. Yeah, the main uh, fisheries we targeted was lobster and crab, but we diversified into catching cuttlefish, bass. Um, we also went netting for soles, place, skates and racer. Sort of a, an inshore, typical inshore fisherman really, that targets whatever migrates past. I've always fished single-handed. My family have all been single-handed. I have a very good friend I've had for about four or five years now, a herring gull that comes along. And as soon as I unhook the mooring, he's aboard and he just sits there until I come home and off he goes. If you were a fisherman, it was almost expected that you join the lifeboat crew. So it was um, because you went to sea every day, obviously you were, you were uh, uh, trained up to a certain standard. So um, you just literally signed up and, and joined. 
I joined the crew in 1991, I was 20. One of my first calls on the lifeboat was to a girl on a lilo off of Pagham. She drifted out to sea. The helicopter had landed in um, Pagham Harbour and we had to take her to them because she needed to go to hospital because she was hypothermic. You've never seen someone so, so much relief on someone's face when they see help coming. I actually got to carry her out to the helicopter, which was quite good. I think she was a bit shocked that she saw a woman there. Uh, and so with the crew of the helicopter, to be quite honest, it's like, oh, it's a woman. <laughs> and now it's so common that women are on the crew and also involved in the fishing industry. It's one thing with fishing, it is actually the most dangerous profession in the UK at the moment by far. Um, you can sort of mitigate for most things, but accidents do happen. We've had crew go over the side, of, um, had fairly substantial knife injuries on the hands, the same as many people have. Also um, lost a thumb where a hatch on the boat came down and chopped it off when we were at sea. So it's, it's a risk. Yeah, you, you accept when you take on fishing. If you do 42 years and come out of the fishing industry with all your limbs, then you've done pretty well. Fishing is really dangerous around here. I mean, we're quite exposed because we're on a peninsula. The seas are rough, there's lots of rocks. Um, so you really do have to know what you're doing. We face quite a danger before we've even got out to the boat, really. Many, many fishermen have, have uh, turn, turned over boats and ca uh, capsized coming ashore. If we had a harbour here, from our perspective, it's a safety thing. It will allow us to be able to get to sea and back again in safety. We won't have to worry about getting ashore in very turbulent waters. But also it puts Selsey on the map. The, the outlay to go to sea nowadays is, is astronomical compared to it was when I first started with Willows. The thing is, uh, everything is so dear now it don't matter the, the bait, the bait is dear. We used to catch a lot of our bait ourselves. You can't do that now because you want so much bait. The Protestant lobsters are st st still getting the same money in the summer as we were 30 years ago. Crabs are slight improvement, but everything else, the pots, the rope, the petrol, the boats, the bait has risen 10 times. I think one of the difficulties with the industry at the moment is we're struggling. It's an aging population, very similar to farming. When I started fishing, um, we used to have the kids from school used to come down the beach. Um, weekends, they come for a trip, holidays, things like that. We give them a bit of pocket money. And that's how, uh, how we got our crews. The problem is now with the, um, you're not allowed to take anybody on the boat until they pass certain sea survival firefighting courses. And you're looking at an 18 year old. And by then, if you haven't got someone really interested in their early teens, um, then you're struggling. You know, once again, their 20s, it's not that profession that people automatically go for. If it's not in your blood to do it, it's very difficult to get out of the morning and do it. But if you've grown up with that lifestyle and you're sort of addicted to that sort of thing, you love it like me, so that's what I do. I'm very proud to be a fisherman at Selsey. My brother and I are very keen to look after the fishing. We're big on conservation and the sustainability of the crab and lobster at Selsey and, and other produce. Pottage fish came about uh, a few years ago, my dad was uh, retiring from making fishing nets and supplying ropes, that sort of thing. Between my mum and my sister, they wanted to stay in the industry and there was nothing of that sort of thing which sells crab, lobster, sandwiches and then that leaves them free to pick and uh, open the trailer and sell it to the public. You come ashore and you get a crowd around the boat, they can't wait to look and see what you've caught, they're fascinated by it. But you still get the old ones, they move to the village and they say, oh, it's smelly here, we don't like it, we'll change it. I think everyone needs to be behind the Selsey fishermen, um, otherwise it doesn't have a future. Yeah, there's, there's people that complain about the smell, but at the end of the day, it's a fishing beach. And first and foremost, before you come and sit on the beach, it is a working beach. So everyone needs to get behind them and help them and support them and buy the fish. <laughs> I think for Selsey uh, the future is it can be good. It really needs an influx of young fishermen with a passion to work hard. It's a way of life. It's how I've been brought up and I will always cherish that. Even if it ended tomorrow, it's history. It's my life. It's part of the heritage here as well as What's in bread? You just, we just got salt water in our bloods. Simple as that. We've got nothing else. Mm -hmm.